Hi, it's Dr. Ren Hartung with Glen Oaks Community College Anatomy and Physiology Lab. Um, I just wanted to show you what an EMG is, an electromyogram in a standard anatomy and phys lab. I've got a laptop set up, I've got an iWork system set up, cell phone charger in the way, um, and let me just go through the basics of it. Once you've got this set up, you need to take a green lead, a red lead, and a black lead. Notice I've got my right arm sleeve rolled up. Um, I'm going to be holding on to this black squeezable bulb. And what this bulb does, because it's hooked into the iWork system, it will give me an idea of how, with how much force I'm squeezing this bulb. You'll see that on the graphic. And at the same time, right now I'm feeling which muscles contract when I do that squeezing. And it's all of these flexor muscles in my forearm. So I need to get the leads that are going to detect the electrical activity in those muscles. I need to get those leads so that we read across those muscles. So I'm going to put, I put the wrong lead on. I'm going to switch that for the red one. Um, the red and black leads are the positive and the negative. And by the way, the reason I put them on here before I put them on my arm is so I don't have to push on my arm too hard. But since I goofed up the green one, I had to push hard. Okay. Now I need the black one. And I'm going to put that across on the other side of my forearm. So now these two leads are going to read the electrical activity happening in the muscles as I contract them. They're going to read between themselves and all of these muscles I can feel contracting when I grip. Lastly, I need a ground and because my watch is electronic, I'm going to take that off. Green is my ground and I'm going to put that on the opposite wrist. So I've got a nice ground. And that's the setup. So I've got the negative and positive leads across the muscle whose electrical activity I'm interested in, or in this case, the group of muscles whose electrical activity I'm interested in. And then somewhere else in my body, I need a ground. We usually put it on the opposite arm, um, but you, you could put it on the person's forehead if you wanted to. It's not going to make a huge difference. At least I haven't seen it make a huge difference. Okay, and I've got my bulb in hand and I'm ready to squeeze the bulb and see what the electrical activity is. So on the, I've already opened up the iWorks to the appropriate program and all I have to do is click record. And it starts recording. And if I squeeze, I see electrical activity in the top box and I see force of my squeezing basically from, based on the bulb down below. Notice that the force, it's actually measuring it in kilograms, and that may or may not be accurate depending on whether you've calibrated this bulb. You have to, really, you have to calibrate the bulb first. All right, let me let go of the bulb and notice something. When I move these fingers, you see electrical activity pop up on there. If I move my wrist, you see electrical activity pop up on there. If you're at the level where you're looking at an EMG like this, you should have an idea of why this is happening. You should know why there are electrical changes happening in those muscles when we contract them. And I thought about showing you what happens with different levels of force, but um, you're prob you probably need to learn that in your class. Um, but just in your mind, if you understand this stuff and if you've studied motor unit recruitment at all, you should be able to guess. If I apply more force to that bulb, will I expect to see more electrical activity or less electrical activity? Um, the other thing to know technically is how we measure how much electrical activity. And that is the absolute integral of the EMG. 
Um, or another way to put it is the absolute area under the EMG. They're basically measuring the same concept, but in a very different way. Um, the absolute integral of the EMG, a simplistic way to think about it is you're asking, how long is this line? I know it jiggles up and down a lot, but how long is the line? If there's less electrical activity, more of a flat line, that line is going to be shorter. If there's more electrical activity, so the line's jiggling up and down and up and down and up and down, you can imagine that line is going to be longer. And a longer line, a greater absolute integral, is going to mean more electrical activity. I am not a mathematician, you should know that, so if you really want to know what absolute integral means, um, go talk to somebody who knows math more. I just know that if that line wiggles up and down more, there's more electrical activity. And I know that the way that we put that into numbers is through what we call the absolute integral, and I trust the machine to give me that number to be able to compare. All right, I hope this is helpful. Let me know. Squeeze. Thanks for watching.